everyone, Mandy here, and I am so excited to watch this video. <sighs> I've been waiting for a long time for it. I know that a lot of the fanders have, but I was lucky enough to be one of the animators for it, and I'm just so excited to watch everything all together. I stayed away from two of the fairy tales um, that were done for the story time Mad Libs. And um, just in case you want to see it and you don't know where to find it, it's on Thomas Sanders and Friends channel. Not the main channel, the Thomas Sanders and Friends channel. So anyway, <laughs> oh, I'm nervous. I honestly can't believe how lucky I was to be chosen to be a part of this, and it was an absolutely fantastic experience. But anyway, I will um, talk to you a little bit after the whole story that I took part in. Okay. Here we go. Ah. Me in phrases you often hear me say. So here we go. Hi, I'm Thomas Sanders. I'm very dapper and also quirky and also homosexual. I often say what is up, everybody? As well as okay, guys, knock on wood, bud. The video will be out tomorrow. I promise. And even though I didn't ask for it, many of you took it upon yourselves to point out the fact that I constantly check my hair when I look into the viewfinder. I'm sorry, it is getting so long, I can't help it. <laughs> What is up, everybody? I'm very excited today because we're returning to one of my favorite games, Storytime Mad Libs, but this time we're making it even more special because we're bringing it to life, baby! If you want to get acquainted or reacquainted with this game, you can click up here, but the basic gist, my friends read out three stories with a bunch of blanks in them, and those blanks were filled with Twitter submissions that you and some of my friends sent me after I requested nouns, verbs, adjectives, and a ton of other things. I know what's going in these blanks, you guys didn't. And this time, with the help of many artists out there, we are providing visuals for these twisted tales. And speaking of which, there is is a theme for this video, fairy tales. And yes, they are largely influenced by their corresponding Disney movies. Not sorry about it. Let's see how bad you all unknowingly tainted these classic yarns. Story time, Sleeping Beauty. Definitely not what they call me. Once upon a time in an ugly kingdom, there lived a pair of rulers. They were super insecure because they didn't have any children. One day, their prayers were answered and they had a daughter. They threw a huge Beyblade tournament to celebrate. Everyone was doing the wrong royal dance to commemorate the new baby, whom they decided to name Lady Gaga. The rulers had also invited the three good penguins to the party. There are only three good ones, hoping they would bestow upon Lady Gaga magical puppies, just millions of puppies. The first gave the princess the gift of sexy lungs. The second gave her a throne made of toads for our supreme leader. And that penguin was escorted out of the Beyblade tournament. That was a weird gift, it really offset some people. And the third was just about to speak when Gordon Ramsay's beef Wellington fell over the crowd. Turns out the rulers had failed to invite one guest. Nicholas Cage. Oh man. He walked in and cast a spell on the princess. Ooh, do I have to do a Nicholas Cage impression again? Okay. On her 17th birth <laughs> on her 17th birth no. <laughs> Okay, on her 17th birth, I can't do it. <laughs> on her 17th birthday, she'll prick her weenus on a I'm a kill you stick and die. Then he disappeared, saying, I, I'll head out. The king exclaimed, What just happened? The queen shouted, Whoa. And all the guests were saying, Jiminy Cricket. Because Jiminy Cricket just showed up. But then they reacted to what just happened by saying, That was totally wicked. But like in a bad way. The third penguin knew what to do. She was like, it's cool, guys. She's not going to die. She's just going to do this. Yeah, yeah, until the spell is lifted by true love's kiss. That is something. That is something right there. And then she and the other penguin disappeared. The rulers were obviously really tired of this prophecy. So they had all the I'm a kill you sticks in the kingdoms destroyed. Time passed exactly 10 minutes. Okay, but... The princess does have to be a little older than a baby. Centuries. And the princess needs to be not dead. 925,600 minutes. We're just a bunch of theater nerds, aren't we? 16 years. That's it. That's perfect. That's exactly the right amount of years. I don't care if it's not silly. We're going with it. For 16 years, they thought they were... Fabulous. They also thought they were safe, and neither of those things were true. One day, Lady Gaga came across a stinky woman using an I'm a kill you stick. She'd never seen one before. And something compelled her to 
immediately she Booped. her Weenus. on it, which led to her. And then the mm -hmm. the good penguins discovered this and exclaimed, "Oh my ravioli chicken, are they more gracious? I cannot stand that macaroni cheese steak. I just wanted to." And cast a spell on the kingdom. By night one way, by day another, this shall be the norm. Until you find true love's first kiss, then take love's true form. And despite that being the spell from Shrek, it made everyone in the kingdom do the same creepy walk until the spell was lifted. Why? Because the penguin who cast it was the same one who gave the gift of the throne of toes. So, you know, she was just a weird one. Anyway, uh-oh, um, time passed. Exactly... Four minutes and 20 seconds. Liza. Sure. Roller coasters. Grew around the palace. One day, a Edgy. prince heard the tale of the bewitched princess in a castle far away. He sashayed to the castle, but was met by none other than Nicolas Cage, who shouted, No! That was a bit scary, sorry. He then transformed himself into a giant German Shepherd. It was fierce looking, baring its teeth thusly. The penguins enchanted the princes Frappuccino. to fly straight into Nicolas Cage's left knee. The cage meister cried out. Uh, uh. And down he went. The prince journeyed up into the princess's room, and there she was, so... Creepy. Really, yeah, truly creepy. He knew what he had to do. Literally shaking, the prince made his way to the princess, closed his... No. Puckered his... Hung. And... Slapped. Her. Then he remembered he was supposed to kiss her, and he did that. She awoke, gazed into his eyes, and said... How about you, yabba dabba don't? He explained he only did it to save her, you know, true love's kiss and all, and she got that, but yeah, back off. And he did. What's the moral of the story? Anything can be a weapon if you use it wrong enough. The end. All right, that one was actually a lot of fun. That came together a lot better than I thought that was going to. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, so that was me. <laughs> so uh, I'm Amanda Roberts, Mandy, and... Um, <laughs> I did the whole thing about the throne of toes. Because the penguin who cast it was the same one who gave the gift of the throne of toes. So, you know, she was just a weird one. Anyway. <laughs> she was a weird one. It's like, how do you translate that in five seconds? That was a big deal. And so how do you figure that out. I think the fun thing was um, coming up with a main design for the Throne of Toes. Uh, we had a big discussion about how in the world you draw a Throne of Toes. And um, it was such a weird concept. But for some reason, the first thing that popped into my head was the Game of Thrones Iron Throne. And so I was like, okay, I, I might have an idea let me do a sketch and see what y'all think. And um, so I did. And <laughs> you have the toes, but toes are attached to feet. So because the toes don't have much form to them, I didn't want them just all stacked like crazy. I, I don't know. I was thinking about comfort at the same time and how in the world would a person be comfortable on a throne of toes and weird concept thought time right so anyways I thought okay if I was going to lean up against a foot I would rather lean up against the sole of the foot rather than the top because it's softer it has more squishy parts <laughs> so I've made two big feet as the back and uh, the arms of the chair and the legs are actually legs from the hip down and um so the back legs are just from the knee down, and the front legs are the hip to the knee as the arm of the chair, and knee down as the front leg. And um, so then there was just the seat left, and um, I was trying to think about how to translate the seat, and then... I, I just thought of a leather chair and how it gets this sort of concave 
marking in it where you've been sitting in it for long enough then that comfortable chair you always sit in the same spot and it gets that imprint and so I started trying to draw the imprint and then it started looking like a spine and then the bottom of it started looking like a well bottom <laughs> and so I just went with it <laughs> Um, there was talk for a little bit about possibly, um, when the king and queen got rid of the throne of toes, having the throne just get up and walk away and with it having full legs, uh, for the chair, um, it could just get up and walk away. But, um, again, five seconds. So just having it in the same shape and bouncing out, um, actually worked better for that. Um, but there was, there was more that I drew and I was going to put in there and then changed my mind because it was putting too much detail into too short of amount of time. Um, and so, um, I, I think, I, I still think about, did I put too much in, but I'm, I'm really pleased with what I did do and um yeah I, I had the whole penguin wobbling in and you know acting all goofy um so there was more of her being silly that I cut out and um but I think that it translated um my original idea was just for my part, the throne of toes specifically, and the um, fact that the penguin looked crazy. She looked a little different from the original um, other two penguins that were not as crazy. And that was just, her hair was a little messed up and her eyes went wonky every once in a while. So, you know, um, not too totally crazy, but I, I respect the other animators in this so much and the conversations that we had were so wonderful. And, um, I, I really, really appreciated all of the information that the more experienced animators shared and the different things that they tried to teach to those of us that didn't have as much experience. That was so valuable. I can't even explain how much I learned doing this. And Quill was wonderful, absolutely wonderful. Kept us informed the entire time to the best of their ability. And... Um, did absolutely everything that they possibly could without sacrificing sleep or, you know, other parts of their life, um, to do it. And I, I was very impressed with how they handled the whole thing. And I couldn't say more about them glowing review for me please let me take part in something in the future because i loved it and it was fabulous and <laughs> so anyway um make sure that you look in thomas's original video and look in the description and get the information for each of the artists because they deserve the thank yous they deserve the attention for the work that they put into it and um if you want to check it out, I also put access to more links for their websites and their YouTube channels and different things on my Twitter, which is at by, B-Y, underscore Mandy, M-A-N-D-I-E. And um, so then you should be able to access things there. It's also on my Instagram, my Tumblr, and my uh, TikTok. And those are all Crafts by Mandy, totally lowercase. And um, 
no spaces. So anyway, going on to review the other two that I have not seen. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm such a dork. I'm so sorry. <laughs> And see what other fairy tales we can mess up, shall we? Story time! The Little Mermaid. Once upon a time, in the land of... Anywhere but here. There was a... Giant. Mermaid who lived under the sea. Her name was... Daisy Joe. Daisy Joe, yes. And she... Memed. The world of humans. One day, she saw a ship go by with the most... Disastrous. Twink. Boy. She had ever seen. Suddenly. One singular box of hornets. Kicked the ship and the man went. Gyrating. Overboard. The princess exclaimed. Oh, wait. Did I explain the mermaid was a princess? The mermaid's a princess. The princess exclaimed. Ah, oh, shark farts. She swam. Awkwardly. Over to him and. Skipped. Him safely to shore. <laughs> she sang to him with her. Beer inducing. Voice. Hoping to wake him up. All the while thinking they could be. Cars. Just as his eyes began to open, she heard the sounds of a search party. Prince, I'm do this if you can hear me! <laughs> Wanting to stay, but knowing her father would forbid it, she boogied back into the ocean. The amount of time it takes a bunny to change a light bulb went by. And the princess knew she had to poke the prince again. She had heard stories about a mysterious figure that might help her. Ursula the sea. Chinchula. After traveling to Ursula's Pizza Palace, Daisy Joe begged for her help. The sea chinchilla saw an opportunity to get something for herself. She told the princess, if you do want to see the prince again, you will trade your Netflix for legs. That's a tough trade. Yep, despite this trade seeming a little bit fishy, the princess squawked and Ursula cast her spell. Abracadab. Bruh. Storing Daisy Joe's Netflix account in her magical potato. Ursula then revealed her trick. Daisy Joe must get true friendships Bracelet. in three days, or she will be turned into poopy. Yes, she will be turned into poopy and belong to Ursula forever. Then she called upon a mighty probably because it was underwater, to carry the princess to shore. At that very moment, the prince was patty caking along the shore, thinking about the mystery girl who impregnated him. Suddenly, he sees the very same girl coming out of the water doing this. Oh, can't. The prince ran to her and brought her to Florida, thinking they could be Kauai. friends from a spaceship made of hot dogs. Ursula saw that her plan to steal Daisy Joe's Netflix account might fail. She disguised herself as a, a YouTuber <laughs> and cast this spell to bewitch the prince. Hippity hoppity. Get off my property. Daisy Joe, seeing her bro in danger, went and cuddled Ursula, breaking the spell. Ursula was enraged by this display of friendship and tried her magic once more to summon a storm of cheese balls. The princess and the prince ran to the Epcot ball and needed it into the sea. They fired all their emo bracelets at the sea chinchilla. Perhaps they were true friendships? Emo bracelets? Ursula cried out! and sank to the most psychedelic part of the sea. The king of the sea had been fangirling over this act of bravery from afar and decided to grant the princess her own 25 legs. At last, the prince and the princess came together and did what they've always wanted to do. Friendship. They all lived swimmingly ever after. I couldn't help myself. What's the moral of the story, you may ask? Safe? The turtles. Oh, gosh, this is fun. I like these stories being, like, super weird, but also semi-making sense. It's kind of it's kind of a fun exercise. I have to wonder, are we, are we destroying these tales, or are we making them better? I don't know. <laughs> Let's move on to story number three. Story time. Rapunzel. Let's just be real, it's tangled. <laughs> Long ago, in the land of... Okay, that's an actual place in Wales, so we're just gonna call it Wales. There was a... Girl named... Oh, I get it, because like Rapunzel is a kind of vegetable, and you're paralleling it by naming her after a type of fruit. That is actually very clever. Well done, young Gavin, you're a genius. She was trapped away in a... Giant toothbrush. In the middle of... Middle Earth. In the middle of Middle Earth. That is... That is very middle. <laughs> this girl was gifted cat -like. powers through her Slimy. hair. The color of purple. Wait, wait, no, black. 
wait, no, blue, wait, no, frick, um, purple. She wanted to explore the outside world so badly, and more than anything, she wanted to attend the annual event she could only see from her giant toothbrush. A uh, horse funeral. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Coincidentally, it happened every year on her birthday. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Her kidnapper, an evil pigeon, told her that the outside world was filled with Wolverine and that it was just downright sickening, but in a bad way. Ooh. So instead, she spent her time inside with her pet tarantula named Pippin. That's appropriate. Middle Earth. Oh. Things took an interesting turn one day when Danny DeVito showed up in her prison like this and said, I am a trash goblin. It was pretty weird, so she hit him with <laughs> ukulele, yelling, Street smart! Danny was appalled to hear this girl spent every day inside just watching Thomas Sanders on YouTube. So he convinced her to escape with him. The first thing she did when she stepped outside was scoot around in the grass. But that was only the beginning. They ended up in a tavern full of stuffed animals where Danny was forced to sing about word association games. And what a sight it was. Oh, I did it. Oh, oh, I did it. Actually, I kind of like that. Um, can we have Danny DeVito in a pirate hat now, artists? They also almost ended up cosplay. in a Starbucks. And after escaping, UFOs. the girl found out that she was actually my dad ming, 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 ming. <laughs> wow my dad <laughs> dad where have you been <laughs> the kidnapper tried to stop her but orange wouldn't allow it not anymore yelling don't mess with me i got the power god and enemy on my side <laughs> danny devito knew it was all about that slimy purple hair so he sang it right off the evil pigeon panicked at this stumbled back and pippin the tarantula helped her to defenestrate herself what the heck does that mean hold on to throw someone out of a window why do we have a word for that <laughs> when everyone surrounding orange realized that she was my dad she <laughs> They, <laughs> they exclaimed, Jumping jelly beans! With this newfound knowledge and a blossoming friendship with Danny DeVito, the girl decided to start a new life by moving to Wakanda and channeling her magic through her um, to become a Master General, Doctor, Sir, Director, Executive, Vice, Ma'am. And best of all, she got to finally attend that horse funeral. <laughs> the moral of that story is that if you've got dreams to chase, go get them, gays. All right, that was a lot of fun. Yes, I just fixed my hair. Deal with it. I think we made these stories just a little bit better. I had a lot of fun with them. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you guys enjoyed. Wait, whoa, it's the Tender Sight. These are awesome. Thomas himself helped design them. Uh, okay. Logan has real note card holding action. Watch your head, Logan. If you squeeze Virgil's hand, he'll say nothing, but he'll silently wonder to himself why you did that. They also glow in the dark if you put glow in the dark tape on them. Cool! Glow in the dark tape sold separately, not by us. Try a craft store or something. Ever could damn, bitch. Oh, my goodness. I, oh, that was so cool. I loved it so much. And... <laughs> I had silent laughing, I had big laughing, I, I, I'm i gonna edit this later and see how stupid I look. But anyway, <laughs> thank you so much for a smile and um, many, many laughs and it was so much fun. So, so much fun. I hope that you have a great day and thanks. Talk to you later. Bye. What the fuck?